What's up engineers? Welcome back, Andy Dev Dan here. The generative AI ecosystem continues to move at a light speed pace. Although the releases haven't been that exciting, OpenAI has continued to release every single day. I'm really excited for them to round out with a huge final model, hopefully a GPT-5, some type of next generation model at the end of the week. My favorite announcement by far has been the O1 and ChatGPT Pro. I'm looking forward to having the O1 model available in the API. Alongside OpenAI, there's been a massive release by Microsoft, the 5.4, 14 billion parameter model is absolutely groundbreaking. This thing is performing at GPT-40 plus levels and it's ultra, ultra tiny. We're gonna look at this model side by side, Gemini 2, another fantastic model. I'm really excited for this model to fully roll out so that we can get access to every single input and output format available. Last but not least, we have Llama 3.3. This model has been great to work with. Another model on the level of GPT-40. With all of these releases, I thought it would be a good time to take a step back and share my large language model use case framework. I've been using this framework to move quickly in degenerative AI age and filter through all of these new model releases and all of these new tool releases. I wanna share it with you here to help you break down the types of prompts you're writing and the AI tooling that complements the generative AI work that you're doing. We're gonna walk through examples using Gemini Flash, Llama 3.3, and the new 5.4. So what does this framework look like? This framework is a simple mental model that I use for categorizing large language model use cases. So what are these use cases and how do they help you in the generative AI age? Let's break them down. We have expansion, compression, conversion, seeker, action, and reasoning. Just by seeing these categories alone, I'm sure the wheels are starting to turn in your mind. So let's break down these categories one by one. Expansion prompts are what you use to generate content, learn new things, get explanations, and generate new ideas. This is one of the most common categories of prompts. Compression prompts are the opposite of expansion prompts. Instead of writing a little bit of content and getting a lot of output. Compression prompts take information, they take blog posts, research, large swaths of information, and they distill it down for you. The most common use case here is of course, summarization. Conversion prompts change the format of information from one format to another. You can think text to SQL, you can think TypeScript to Python, you can think French to German. Conversion prompts take information in one format and convert it to another. The core information is still there, but these prompts transfer that information between different formats. We have seeker prompts. Seeker prompts are used to find information. This is what gets run at the end of your RAG pipeline. We then have action prompts. These are, of course, our tool calling prompts that execute commands that have concrete side effects. And then, of course, last but not least, we have reasoning prompts. These provide judgments, conclusions, insights, and ultimately they help drive action. They help drive decision making. So let's explore each category in a little bit of detail and run a couple prompts to kind of show off how each category is different so that you can easily categorize your work, your prompts, and the tooling you need to support each one of these types of prompts. Okay, so before we move on, let's talk about who cares. <laughs> Why is this framework important? Why do you need to categorize at all? Can we just write random prompts? Organizing generative AI work into categories will help you speed up and simplify your gen AI work. How will they do that? Mental frameworks create better and faster decision-making. One type of prompt only needs certain tooling, only needs certain syntax, only needs certain prompt structures. It also simplifies your prompt engineering. By classifying generative AI problems into one of these six categories, you simplify the process of writing prompts and selecting the right AI tooling. You also find that these categories are a great way to create reusable benchmarks for the problems that you're solving. The way you'll benchmark a expansion prompt is much different from the way you'll benchmark a seeker prompt. Okay, and then last but not least, this framework is really fantastic for guiding agentic design. When I'm thinking about building AI agents and agentic workflows, the chain of the prompt categories can help guide and simplify the shape and structure of your AI agent. As we're pushing toward the North Star of this channel, which is to build living software that works for us while we sleep, we need to be putting together these larger AI agents and agentic workflows with chains of prompts. 
and workflows of these prop categories. And having concrete categories makes it easier to design and build the structure of your AI agents. If the ideas interest you and you want to accelerate your generative AI engineering with this simple framework, let's go ahead and dive into this. Hit the like, hit the sub, join the journey. Prompt engineering, AI coding, AI agents. This is the bread and butter of this channel. This is all we're focused on. This is the most important technology. This is the best tool for most jobs. So let's start with the expansion prompt. So this is where you're taking small inputs and converting them into large outputs. You're literally expanding your input text into something larger. The obvious use cases here are content generation, explanation, learning, ideation, story writing, code gen, documentation. So here's an example prompt. We have the Gemini 2.0 flash model here, Llama 3.3, and of course, the new 5.4. Here's a simple prompt, right? Write the intro to a blog post about AI and its impact on software. If we just click Gemini 2.0 here, Gemini is going to take this prompt and generate a response for it. So you can see here, it's generating a couple options for us. We're taking a little bit of information, right? A query, a question, a request, and it's being expanded out into something larger, right? So this is an entire category, an entire class of prompts that you likely have and will write. So you can see here, we're getting a couple different options from Gemini, that's cool. Let's run Llama 3.3, that ran really quickly. I'm using Fireworks as my Llama 3.3 provider. This is a great 70 billion parameter model. You can see we got a nice response here. We got a title and a nice block of content. And then of course, we can run 5.4. 5.4 is running locally on my device. I love that this is running on my device. It has incredible intelligence for a 14 billion parameter model. But you can see we have a really nice response here from Phi. This is a proper expansion prompt. You have a little bit of information, you have a query, and you want to blow it out into something larger. These are one of the most common categories of prompts. Next, we have compression prompts. So compression prompts are the opposite of expansion prompts. This is where you're taking large inputs and compressing it down into small outputs. You're distilling, you're summarizing, you're gathering key points, you're extracting key information, you're building summaries from meetings, Let's look at a simple prompt here. This is information from the Gemini 2.0 Flash release. And we can, of course, use Gemini 2.0 Flash to summarize its release. This model is insanely fast. I'm really excited for everything that's being announced around the Gemini 2.0 series. The multimodal input and output is making this model truly unique. You can see there, we compressed the information inside of this prompt to get a concise, Result. We can also use Llama 3.3 here to execute our compression prompt. And of course, 5.4, 14 billion parameters. It can definitely do this job. You can see there, we also have three bullet points from 5.4. So compression prompts are a great way to condense information, right? I use this one all the time. There's so much information out there. Compression prompts allow us to learn faster. They allow us to compress information. And these are essential for compressing large amounts of information for AI agents and for agentic workflows. So moving on, we have conversion prompts. So this is where we take an input format and we want the response to be in a different format. So you can think, you know, text to code, text to SQL, language translation, format conversion, you know, JSON to XML, uh, style conversions. This is a really powerful category for prompts you can see how they're distinct from compression and you can see how they're distinct from expansion. So here's a classic scenario where we have an SQL table and we wanna convert a natural language query into an SQL statement. We can pass this to any model and it's gonna give us a really nice concise result here, right? We wanna show all customers and their total spending in the last seven days. We pass in the table as a variable for the prompt. And then of course, uh, you know, llama, Flash, Phi. Um, this is a very, very solved problem for language models. Language models are great at converting formats because they know and have internalized the language of many, many formats. These are conversion prompts. Let's move on. Seeker prompts are very, very valuable. Many businesses are built around the seeker prompt. This is where we're querying information and we're extracting data. This slightly overlaps with the compression prompt. The big difference here is that we're pulling specific information with the seeker prompts. So you think of things like code base question answering, right? You can think of things like support QA bots, right? Information extraction, 
document search, when you're running OCR or parsing information out of documents, pattern recognition, and knowledge retrieval. The secret prompt is all about pulling important information for your specific use cases. So a prompt will look something like this, right? This is a really simple example. We have this sales report and we wanna know what's the best performing product in Q3, right? So we're looking for a specific piece of information. This differs from compression because we're not taking information and changing the format of it into a smaller form. What we're doing is looking for a key piece of information that's embedded inside a document, right? There's one version of this answer that we're looking for, not multiple. So you can see here, the answer here is product B, right? We have uh, 95K sales. Let's go ahead and see if Llama 3.3 gets the answer right here. Perfect, 95K sales. You can see Llama 3.3 working through the answer here. And of course, 5.4, great model, 14 billion parameters once again. It's gonna get the answer right here. Product B had the highest sales figure in that quarter Q3. So these are seeker prompts, right? You have information and you wanna extract specific data. Seeker prompts are very valuable. And you can see how by looking at the seeker prompt, you would use completely different AI tooling between seeker prompts versus conversion prompts, impression, and expansion prompts, right? So let's move on to our action prompts. These are really simple action prompts execute real commands. So the most fundamental form of this, of course, is tool calls. Most LLMs have some type of tool calling mechanism. We can kind of mock this functionality by writing this prompt, generate git commands. Obviously, this is not actually going to execute these commands, but you get the idea. Action prompts have a concrete side effect. This is where our prompts and our large language models start acting in the real world. These are powerful, distinct prompts that really allow LLMs to take control over things in the real world and have larger effects outside of different types of text generation and manipulation. Okay, so we have, you know, Gemini 2.0 Flash here, giving us a great answer there. 3.3 will spit out effectively the same thing. And 5.4, of course, will also do the same thing. Okay, get checkout, get add, get commit, get push. So these are action prompts. You can summarize this category roughly as text to tool or text to action. It doesn't always need to be in the form of a tool call. You can manually set that flow up yourself. For instance, if you execute JSON and parse you know, function calls or parse functionality that will then get executed by code, that's also an action prompt. And finally, we have the most powerful type of prompt, the reasoning prompt. These are becoming a lot more popular right now because this is the prompt that is going to make decisions for you, right? So this is where we're taking complex sets of inputs. We're taking state. We're taking, you know, the current kind of application state. We're taking variables and we're letting our language models make judgments, give us insights and make full on decisions based on our complex inputs. Okay, so use cases here are decision-making, planning, problem-solving, risk assessment, trend analysis, recommendation systems, threat analysis. These all fit under reasoning prompts. So for example, we have this prompt where we're looking for an opinion, right? We're looking for judgment on three different approaches for implementing user authentication in our web app. Custom JWTs, classic auth, and then Firebase off. These models are going to inform us. They're going to give us insights into a decision that, that we might want to make. There is some overlap here with expansion prompts, but you can see how this is completely distinct because we could use this reasoning prompt to inform a chain of prompts, right? So we're getting a great long breakdown here from Gemini Flash. We can run the exact same thing in Llama. It's giving us a breakdown of you know when to use each, you can see Llama 3.3 breaking down a nice, concise answer for us. It's giving us information. It's making a judgment call and giving us a recommendation of a best option. Okay, so you can see how this is, again, completely distinct from the other five categories. We're not expanding information here. We're not compressing it. We're not converting it. We're not firing an action. We're not seeking any information. We're looking for an opinion. We're looking for insight. We're looking for information to guide a decision, right? We can run this on 5.4 as well, and we'll get a similar breakdown. Fantastic. So you can see our 5.4 response came back here. You know, this gave me the exact same quality of answer, and, it, and this model ran 
on device, really loving this. If we change the inputs, gave it some more information about our team or our current tech stack, it very likely would have changed the judgment, insight, or decision that this reasoning prompt would have returned for us. These are the six categories. Categorizing your LLM use case immediately narrows down the prompt engineering approach and tooling needed. If you're writing a seeker prompt, you might need a RAG pipeline. If you're writing a reasoning prompt, you need information to help drive the decision. If you're just doing simple expansion or compression, just paste in the information and then let it expand into more details or compress into the key bullet points or content that you're looking for. This is a big takeaway. Um, categorizing has helped me a ton and I think it can help you, which is why I'm sharing it with you here today. So chain categories to guide AI agents and agentic workflows. I think when you're designing agentic workflows and AI agents, you can break things down into individual prompts in sequence. For instance, you might have a seeker look for specific information based on information from your database. Then it might reason over that information in your database. Say you might want to uh, pitch an upsell to a specific user in specific scenarios and you would have your LLM do that. You would seek, then you might do reasoning and then you would act, right? Then you would actually fire off an action prompt to call a specific tool. Categorizing LLM use cases is a great way to build and design your AI agents and agentic workflows. You can reuse tooling for each category. Each category has a distinct success metric, patterns, tooling, benchmarks, prompt structures, so on and so forth, right? This makes it easy to reuse tooling and benchmarks for prompts that fit in the same category, okay? The power of this LLM use case framework lies in its simplicity. Every large language model will likely fit into one or two at most of these categories. They each have their own distinct patterns, prompt structures, success metrics, and tooling associated which will make your generative AI engineering more systematic and efficient, ultimately leading to speed and easier decision-making. So just to summarize one more time, the six categories for the most common large language model use cases, you have expansion, compression, conversion, seeker, action, and reasoning, right? Expansion prompts are expanding content, expanding text. You have compression prompts where you're distilling, summarizing, pulling key information from a larger body of information. You have conversion where you're transferring between formats. Seeker prompts where you're looking for specific information inside of a larger body of data. We have action prompts where we can execute workflows and commands that themselves can run entire chains of prompts, agents and agentic workflows. And then of course we have the reasoning prompts. Reasoning prompts are especially powerful and especially unique. They help you actually make decisions. And when you put this in an AI agent or an agentic workflow, they guide the flow of your tool. This is where everything is going. Tool calling is still, I think, super, super underutilized in developer workflows, in AI agents in general. This is something we're gonna be spending a lot of time on in the channel, actually using all these categories of prompts to put together concrete reasoning machines, AI agents that solve specific problems really well on their own. Thanks to these categories, I have developed, you know, entire suites of patterns, benchmarks, and AI tooling that specialize in each one of the categories. So let me know what you think about these six categories. Do you find this grouping useful? Do you see completely different categories? Am I missing one? Drop a comment down below. Let me know what you think of my categorization here. So that's it for this one. I want to share this with you to give you an idea of how you can move faster with all of these incredible releases coming out from OpenAI, Microsoft, Gemini, Llama, Google. None of this matters if we can't categorize and use and build with this stuff. I'm ultra excited for the releases coming up. I hope you are too. If you're not subscribed to the channel, hit the like, hit the sub, and I'll see you in the next one.